Hello, Bible and pop culture team. My name is Philip, and uh, your crew has asked me to talk about purpose. And uh, that's a good one. So I would ask you a quick question first. Have you ever had to make a meal with all the wrong ingredients? You know, you just, all you know is that you're hungry and you have to figure it out. Have you ever had to do a construction project with the, all the wrong tools and maybe you don't get to go to the hardware store, you just have to look through the scrap pile and you don't have any plans, you're just figuring it out. I would say that life and purpose is a whole lot more like that than it is the perfect Thanksgiving meal or the perfect house built with the perfect plans. And here's the thing, I think that life is a lot more fun as soon as we learn to accept that it's more like the pop-up meal than the Thanksgiving meal. Think about this. Thanksgiving, yes, you have all the right ingredients. Yes, you've been working on it. Everything's supposed to, the table looks perfect. The family's all here. You've been preparing and everything. But that meal has tons of anxiety and fear and preparation. And to me, the hardest part, it has tons of expectations, right? That it's supposed to look and it's supposed to feel like it did last year or two years ago when it was so much fun. And now all of a sudden, Instead of enjoying it, all we're doing is trying to make it look like we think it should look. Compare that to what if our purpose is more like the pop-up meal where life throws at us different things, but we learn to find joy in the creation and in the moment and in the randomness of it. And the best part of it is whenever God does something really cool in our lives through that random, unexpected moment, we don't get the glory he does because we're looking at it and we're just saying, this was so much unexpected fun. And we're not looking at it saying, look at what I have created with everything within my power. That gives me glory and the other gives God glory. And also, it gets rid of the anxiety and the fear because I'm no longer trying to create this moment, this expectation. Instead, I'm just looking at it and I'm laughing and I'm living in the moment and I'm walking through it just amazed at how much fun I'm having in spite of my rando circumstances. And life will give us random circumstances. As soon as I or we think we're in control, it's going to throw us a curveball. Maybe all those curveballs are meant to point us back to our creator. And maybe when we make it through those curves and those tough situations, maybe when we make it through, it points everybody that looks at our lives, not to us, but it points them to God, right? Think about that. So maybe you're today trying to live towards this ideology or this pipe dream. And I would challenge you to find your purpose right now with the ingredients that you've been given and be comfortable with it and laugh about it and live into it, right? Um, I was, a uh, so just so you know, I am a pastor professionally. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's like, I'm a professional Christian. I kind of hate that actually. It's a weird thing, but it's true. I am a pastor and that is the main thing that I do in my life. And so many people so I'm a worship pastor too. So I do the music and the artistic side of things, the creative side of things. So many people would say that my purpose is found on Sunday morning. It's lived out on Sunday morning when I'm leading worship for the church and I'm pointing people to God. And I would say, yes, it is a little bit, but I would say probably for me, I know that my real purpose is found in the day to day. It's found in my breakfast burrito that I get from my supersonic burrito that I get from Sonic every morning. And I talk to the girl, Cassie, who uh, just happens to be working the window every morning. It's found not in the rehearsal where I rehearse my band as a part of my job. It's found in the time where we go to the open mic night after rehearsal and we sit in and we jam with people, other musicians in town, and we laugh and we have a good time with them. That's where my purpose is found, is in my life being lived with others. And uh, now here's the thing. If you're a Christian, this will make you, this makes me cringe. People will try to say that, oh, well, I'm going and I'm meeting people because I'm trying to make them a Christian like me. That's so cringy to me because I don't want to be living my life loving people 
with a purpose, an agenda to make them like me. That's super cringy to go and say, my goal at, at Sonic every morning is to make so-and-so that serves me a Christian like me. No, 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 no. My goal is to go to Sonic and get the Super Sonic burrito and become friends with that person because I think she's awesome. And that's it, period. Now, if she comes around someday and says, Philip, where do you, what church you go to? I love to go to it. Well, cool. But my purpose in going to meet her every morning is not to make her be like me. My purpose in going to the open mic night is not to make everybody at that bar a Christian. My purpose is to be me, to love God and to love everybody around me. And I believe that by me doing that, I actually am loving God and I am showing them God. As soon as they feel like I am trying to make them a Christian like me, oh my gosh, like that is loving people with an agenda and that is loses all its power and all its love. And that's, that's not the point. My point is to be a follower of God in the world. And when people come to me with any kind of need or they're looking for anything, I can tell them how I've found that in God. And yes, that does point them to Christ, but that has nothing to do with me. That has to do with God. I am a light in this world, period. And so does that make sense to you? I hope it does because loving people with an agenda is not my purpose, but being a person in the real world, living life with people and loving them and laughing with them and getting to know them and what makes them tick, that's my purpose. And guess what? My whole life has been spent with many people in this world coming to me, talking to me about the hope that I found in Christ. And that's cool. That's really cool. So I hope that as you listen to this, maybe if you've been putting your hope and your purpose into an ideology or trying to live up to some expectation or some perfect dream, a pipe dream, maybe you can let go of that and start to calm down and start to look at your purpose being revealed in the now, right in front of you, in the conversations with your brother, your sister, your kids, your families, in the conversations with the random person at the random restaurant, that you can see your purpose in the way you um, do your job and you do it well, that you can start to see that your purpose is not some pipe dream ridden with anxiety and this expectation to live up to. Instead, open your eyes and look at what's happening all around you. And with every tick of the watch, every countdown of every second of our lives as it's being lived out, every moment that we use, we are living out our purpose so easily and so effortlessly because it was never us doing the great things in our lives. We're letting God do them. And so that everybody who looks at us, they point to God and not us. They point to him and not me. That's the goal. Let's live it out. It's happening right now all around us.